Steve Alton, the American author who became known for his Meg series of novels, and perhaps more recently became known to a wider audience for the movie adaptation The Meg, featuring Jason Statham that was released in theatres towards the tail end of 2018. In today's video, I bring you an exclusive interview with the man himself, Steve Alton documenting the long and very surprising history that the movie has had, his personal involvement with the film, his thoughts and feelings on it, what is likely to come next in the series given the way the rights are situated, and what to look out for next from Steve Alton and his awesome literary work. So sit back, enjoy, and if you do, please don't forget to hit like, and if you're new here, then consider subscribing to the channel for more content just like this in future. If you do enjoy this content, then consider supporting the channel and myself on the endeavour to bring you more content like this and to a higher standard by checking out the Patreon page link in the description box below. Please note that due to external factors, this interview was not recorded. When The Meg was announced last year, it instantly caught my eye as something that could be fantastic. The movie itself absolutely has its detractors. From a personal standpoint, I feel it really had to be what it was, and in this interview you will learn exactly what Steve thinks of the film as well. But from the film's release, I had wondered myself what does the creator think of his work in this current adapted form. So when I got the opportunity to speak to Steve, my first questions were, how? How did the movie come to be? Was it Steve who approached the studios, or was he approached by a studio? Little did I know, Steve's answer would actually open up a 20 plus year journey to bringing the movie to screen. And I quote, Summer 1996, the first 100 pages of the manuscript to Meg and the story treatment are optioned by my manager Ken Achety and Warren Zide on a first look deal to Hollywood Pictures, Disney. Warren Zide is attached as producer, Tom Wheeler will pen the script, and head of studio David Vogel will oversee the project. The deal is brokered by ICM's Jeff Robinov, who will later take over at Warner Bros, and Robinov would fast track Deep Blue Sea. Summer of 1998, Hollywood Pictures decides not to renew Meg after head of studio David Vogel is terminated. Rights are then reverted back to me, and I pen my own adaptation of Meg. March of 2004, Friend and Chud.com founder Nick Nunziati takes Meg to director Guillermo del Toro and producers Larry Gordon and Lloyd Levin. They will serve as producers using my script. Summer of 2004, director Jan de Bont is attached to Meg as director. I rewrite the script with de Bont's notes. Winter of 2004, the producers bring the package and script to New Line Cinema execs Jeff Katz and George Wilde, who want the project. New Line is looking for a project for screenwriter Shane Salerno, and Salerno chooses Meg. May of 2005, after almost four months of tense negotiations with Larry Gordon, New Line officially options Meg. September of 2005, Salerno finishes the first draft of Meg, studio likes the draft but asks for changes. December of 2005, Salerno finishes second draft, foreign sales push for a green light and New Line decides it wants the budget co-financed. Guillermo del Toro opts off Meg. Spring of 2006, co-financiers back off when it is suspected that foreign rights were undersold. Meg production team splits into two camps. And in the fall of 2006, the executive Richard Brenner is then attached to Meg, but in the spring of 2007, New Line decides not to pursue Meg. October 2007, I fire everyone and option Meg to producer Belle Avery. And then from 2007 to 2015, we co-write an entirely new script. Bell will use this script to bring aboard Gravity Pictures. Package is taken to Warner Bros, who wants in. And in August 29th, 2015, Meg officially goes into production. 
I think what's potentially the most interesting part of Steve's response is simply the fact that Deep Blue Sea was fast-tracked over the Meg, I guess you could say. It's an interesting turn of events, and one that when you view the Meg as a comparison to Deep Blue Sea in tone, it's one that lines up and compares quite nicely. A little tongue-in-cheek, a little serious, a little dark. The Meg is definitely a 90s movie in tone, which in my view is something that sealed itself to success. The fact that Steve has been trying to get this made for over 20 years is again a staggering achievement. Regardless of your views of the film itself, it's incredibly rare that someone will continue and persevere through optioning rights and approaching studios for that length of time. As an author, Steve is clearly accomplished, and for him to get that work to screen after so long really is an achievement. So when the production was in full swing, Steve had made several comments here and there to some outlets on the trailers and posters that were coming out, so I thought it prudent to ask how involved in the shoot was he, especially considering that it was a 20 plus year endeavour. Quote, I was not involved at any time. I saw the trailers five minutes before they were posted, but I loved them. Other than sharing my thoughts to Belle, I have no creative control over the movie at all. I was invited to the set, but Parkinson's makes long air flights difficult. However, my daughter, Kelsey, went to China and met everyone. Now, due to the response of the movie from the fans of his original work, I wanted to ask what he himself, Steve, thought of the finished product. Was Steve happy with the outcome of the movie, and what did he think to the tone? Quote, I loved the movie in tone, which works for the first movie. Having said that, the second movie, like the second novel, The Trench, must establish the science of the depths. It must be darker, and it must be much more intense. I have no doubt it will be all of that and far more. So naturally from here, I wondered what Steve's involvement would be in the sequel, so as to attain that tone he previously mentioned must be established. Quote, Bell Avery owns all the rights to every Meg sequel, as well as The Lock. She is the only one I trust with these novels. Now going back to those that loved the novels but didn't quite enjoy the movie so much, I wanted to know if Steve had anything he would like to say to those people personally, from the author himself, the author to the fans. Quote, The Megheads know how I feel and I appreciate their loyalty to the books. At the same time, I truly believe you can love and support both, and the second movie will win them over. And to close, Steve wanted to make a special mention of a program he's involved with, and one that is near and dear to his heart. One which I'm happy to mention here because it really is a worthwhile cause. The Adopt an Author program. The AAA is a non-profit teen reading program originated by high school teachers who began using MEG, to motivate their students to read. We offer free curricular materials, tests, vocab lists, posters, and direct contact with Steve himself and other authors via Skype and email. But it's Meg that really grabs them. And for more information on all of this, you can go to adoptanauthor.com. I will leave a link down below to this website in the description box. So what is next for Steve Olsen? Currently he is working on a sequel to The Lock titled The Lock Heaven's Lake. It's a direct order novel and it can only be purchased from his personal website steveolton.com. It's not something which you will find on Amazon at all. He included the awesome cover art as well for me to show to you folks. So there you have it. I just wanted to say a special thank you to Steve for taking the time to sit down and answer my questions. For me, as a movie reviewer and journalist, I had absolutely no idea the history of the Meg movie, and to learn that it's been in the works for 20 plus years was just staggering. It's a true achievement to have it got to the screen. I really enjoyed the first one. Sure, it wasn't serious, it was light-hearted, and yes, it was a bit dumb in parts, but I had a really, really good time in the theatre with it. So I will be really happy if a sequel gets made, if only for another great fun experience. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's exclusive interview with Steve Alton. If you want to leave your thoughts down below, please do. And if you enjoyed it, consider hitting like and sharing this to get it out there to a wider audience. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you want more content just like this in the future. And as always, I've been Mr. H. Take care.